Welcome, what's up, dog? What's up, dog? What's up, dog? What's up, what's up everyone? What's up, what's up, what's up, dog? My name is Brendan. Oh, hey, I'm James. James. I'm Keith. And we are What's Up, Dog. Today we have a very, 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 very special guest. Um, we have a very special guest because I am extremely proud to call him my mentor, my Sifu, and most importantly, my friend. Um, he has achieved tremendous results in the dog sports world with over 20 years of competitive experiences. He has also achieved top four in the world in 2014 uh, with a dog he trained from zero to hero, Mr. Michael Lee. Hello. Sound effects. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so... Basically, I'm not here to, to we're not here to be, uh, talk bad about anyone. We're not here to, to say any bad things. We, we're here to have an open discussion, which I think is very important in today's uh, training society, dog sports world and stuff like that. So, of course, here, I'm not here to, to tat high or anything, right? But the wow. most important thing is that we want to know more about how you started um, in, in the dog sports world. And, of course, a little bit about your history. Um, because it must be commended from what you have achieved um, over these 20 odd years. And yeah, so we just want to know more about how you started at the beginning. Uh, I, start, I start from a, a normal dog lover. I start from a normal dog lover. I just love dogs. Uh, I like to have dogs since, I, since I'm a kid, about when, when I'm six, seven years old. Our family, we have dogs. We have a mongrel. And then from there, all the time in my life, I have dogs. Eh? Until, I think until I'm uh, 20, 21, 20 or 21 years old. It's about mm -hmm. 1990. Eh? Then I, I uh, bought a pedigree dog. I bought a rope boiler. I start from a rope boiler. Then I start, ah. <laughs> yeah, and I start in a show ring. I start in show dog rope boiler. And then I after that, uh, Due to I love dogs, then I start to I start to want to do something with my dog. Yeah, so mm -hmm. at least uh, some sit down, sit or down or stand or recall or whatever. And I like to do something, some activity with, with my dog. Mm -hmm. And then I start from there. <clears throat> then uh, I yes, for sure I first I go to showing because in Malaysia, uh, mm -hmm. we are more on uh, people we have dogs, I have pedigree dogs, we would like to go for show. Yep. And then after that, uh, at the end, I find out that the, the showing is, is not what I like. What I like is uh, more on the, more on the training. I, mm -hmm. I love more to see the improvement of my dog uh, in behavior. Mm -hmm. So then uh, I start to train also uh, with my Rottweiler and a little bit. And mm -hmm. after that, I, I meet a dog training center in, uh, in Bangkok, in Thailand. Uh, that mm -hmm. is the uh, that is the guy who said, okay, I can teach you uh, my thirty years experience with that and uh, with some money for sure, and uh, I have paid for it. Uh, to learn from him for six months, and then after six months, uh, I found out that um, I didn't learn anything from him, and uh, <laughs> I get, uh, okay. yeah, I get very disappointed about that. Yeah. And then after that, I try to improve myself uh, by by going to Germany for, mm -hmm. for first as a uh, go to try. Germany just for just for a visit visit some dogs or visit something else. But then I see the training there by uh, by accidentally. And uh, I love the training. I love the, the their club training. There is a German Shepherd dog club and uh, we saw some old men, some very famous old men and but wow they are training for me, on that year is nineteen ninety seven. Yeah, nineteen ninety seven is very very impressive for me. Uh, mm -hmm. Michael, and, why uh, why didn't you uh, why didn't you try YouTube? On that time, there's no YouTube. On that time, <laughs> nineteen ninety over <laughs> in Malaysia, we have jarring. <laughs> don't, have, uh, don't have that experience with jarring one five one one or something else. Yeah, you have to very very happy when you can send out one email with a photo. Yeah. Yeah, and one photo, after one photo, says, oh, it takes you very, very long. 
Whatever. I remember. I remember you have to remember to switch off call wait, uh, call waiting because if you don't switch off call waiting and you're connected on jarring, someone yeah. calls. If you get someone calls you, yeah. your connection. Yeah. <laughs> and then, yeah, and then yeah, yeah. you have to know our window. Our window just improved that on window ninety. I think ninety eight. Ninety four. <laughs> yeah, window 98. It's not window 98. Need window 98. And then from there, then we start to have some windows, some photos, some pictures, and something else. Yeah. Before yeah. that, that is a black and green. <laughs> yeah. The black so, screen. So how do you with, without without internet, how do you find these guys in Germany? Yeah, yeah how, how do you connect? How how did I find this guy in, in Germany? Because I I have met a, a German guy. I have met a German guy in, in Bangkok, in Thailand. And then, okay, then he come to me because he loved dogs, I love dogs. And after disappointed from the guy from the training center in Bangkok, then, uh, then I come, um, I come to meet the guy in a show ring, in a German Shepherd dog uh, show ring. A German guy come to me, okay, then he said he have dogs. And then I have seen also his how he trained his dog. I'm very impressive about that. And then, then we speak, uh, become friends. And then after that, he is the guy bring me to, to Germany. And then we all my journey, I start to, since 1997, wow. then I go to Germany every year uh, until, until uh, 2019 is the last year because we, yeah. we cannot go anywhere. Yeah. So I didn't miss any 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 year. So since wow. 1997, every year I go to Europe. Is I go to first Germany, then I go to uh, Netherlands, I go to Finland, and uh, yeah, I I I I have many years experience there in Europe. How long were you like your first when you German in Germany? How long were you there like for the first time to learn I, everything? This time I'm there about fourteen days. Fourteen days. Yeah, about two weeks. And uh, it's uh, very impressive because uh, I have I never have been uh, in Europe before, and uh, yeah, the cold weather, the the weather just very nice for dogs and uh, the fresh air. Uh, I love uh, it very much. It's very good. So okay, so I have a question to ask you because we also want to share our sport, right? Because of course I train under you, and 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 not many people understand this this kind of sport that we are currently doing which was formerly known as Schutzen, then to IPO, and now IGP. So in our sport, we have tracking, obedience, and protection. But what does IGP mean to you as a trainer and a person who competes in this sport? Mm, for me, IGP is a, is a is, many people think it's a sport, but for me, it's not a sport. Mm -hmm. For me, it's, this, is a, this is the sport with a very, very big knowledge very very big knowledge uh, in this sport yeah uh, because from from uh, igp sport we have a tracking we have uh, obedience and we mm -hmm. have protection and mm -hmm. the knowledge to train if you have a puppy and then when you start from puppy selection and then you start from puppy training from two months until three and a half year when they become a a, a, a completion dog Mm -hmm. You need a lot of knowledge, and then mm -hmm. from that knowledge to train a puppy until a, a top spot dog. From that knowledge, you can, uh, what they call, you can divert. You can change to many directions because mm -hmm. because from from uh, because the training is not a uh, is not a uh, fake because that we can change. We can change from tracking the knowledge we use in tracking in IGP. We can use for police uh, police dog tracking. We can use uh, the the knowledge from IGP tracking there. We can change to the hard surface tracking. We yep. can change to uh, the search and rescue uh, tracking, yep. searching. And then we can change to send discrimination uh, tracking. Mm -hmm. And then we also can use the technique inside to train uh, the narcotics searching dog, the explosive searching dog, the blood indication dog, any kind of indication. The knowledge is there, but it's is uh, depend on how you want to twist. Yeah? Yep. So yep. There, that is a very, very big knowledge there. I come from the people who train IGP, but after a few years, after I can uh, uh, handle, I, can, I master the technique in IGP, I changed many, many things in uh, like, just like in protection work. The, the mm -hmm. protection work is many people think is the dog biting the sleeve, but yes, in our sport, yes, 
is a biting the sleep. But when you can change, because of we are forcing our dog to bite the sleep. So if we want mm -hmm. to change the direction of biting, they can bite on the right hand, they can bite on the leg, they can bite everywhere we like him to do. Yeah. So it's depend on what how we train, how we want at the end of the dog. Yeah. So many people, many, many, I think many police uh, uh dogs, they 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 are they're thinking that our dog is only for sport, it's only for show, but mm, for me it's not. For me, it's not. Yes, we we train when we want our dog more in prey drive. Then we go to the spot. We can we we can twist them more in prey drive. But when we want him to make a real bite, yes, our dog can do. <laughs> then we put on. When then we make the dog in more aggression. That <laughs> is, that is uh, that is not a problem. Any, I don't think so. Is any problem? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, cause cause the reason why I ask is because of course there's different types of protection sport, ring sports, KMPV, Belgian ring, all these different types of um, sports, right? So if you compare this versus IGP, like, why why do you think IGP is, okay, maybe it's better than the rest? It's is, not, is it's that not safe better. to say? It's not better because IGP, yeah. uh, there is more people who play in this game. Mm -hmm. uh, and you have to know the KMPV is not allowed to come, it's not allowed to take a, uh, the, I think it's not allowed to take a competition out of Netherlands. Okay. Yeah. So okay, okay. the ring sport is not easy when you don't have that kind of environment. It's not easy to train at the ring sport because you are not alone. You are not uh the training is not is not only alone. Yeah. I think and then IGP I think is more suitable for internationally. Mm. Yeah. So so this I mean this goes up to my follow up question because. Of course, there are different breeds and different bloodlines. The okay for for the general public, do you, do you think that bloodline really matters if you were selecting a dog for for KMPV, IGP, ring sport, these kind yes, of different it's, things? It's, uh, for sure, it's very important. The bloodline is there is uh, very important, but uh, the more important before you select the dog is uh, you need to know the dog. You need to know the father. If you have seen the father, okay, that is the type you like. And then you check the bloodline. Okay, the, the bloodline is the bloodline you like. Okay, then you then you have to look for the female. It's the same. The female is the type you like. Then after that, you have to check the dog first. Don't look the first the pedigree. If you just see the bloodline, then you close your eye. Okay, okay this bloodline, the sun is will be. No, it's not. It's yep. not you. You have to see the dog first. You see the dog. The that kind of dog you like. Yes. You love that kind of dog, and then you can check the bloodline. Okay, who is the father? Who is the mother? Is that the father and mother you like? How is their healthy? Mm -hmm. Yeah. How is the genetic carry the hip, the elbow, the spinal, uh, everything? <laughs> then okay. Then when they are they they are all healthy, and then. Okay, you you love the father, you love the the dog, then you then you select as a as a as the as the the father of your puppy. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't I don't my dog only look for the okay who is the father the blood like I I I will not I will not take like that I yeah. will first check okay this dog I like the type the character the temperament the grip the speed the drive yeah is the type I I like. Okay, then I look the pedigree. Yep. Then I then I check the bloodline. I will not check the bloodline first. Yep. So, yeah. so Michael has actually has actually preached this to to us many many times, and I completely agree with this. And I think I will live with this. The what what he said. <laughs> um, in terms of your dog can be a beautiful canvas, right? Your dog can have everything in the bloodline, in the paper, in the pedigree. But it also comes down to the artist, which can be the handler, I feel. So yeah. not only looking at the bloodline, but of course, depending how well you can become an artist with your quality of tools, paper, all these different types of things. Yeah, you which need, I think it's... Um, you need a team too. Huh? You, yes, yes, when yes. You are, yes. When, are you, when you are good in a training, you have a good dogs and you need to forget you need a team. Yeah, yeah. If you yeah, don't yeah. Have so team, again... Yeah, I'm very happy that you have actually taught me this as well. But again, to, to let people know, I guess people who are interested in this, in this sport, um, they want to know how you would prepare your dogs 
for the competitions? Mm, how I prepare my dog? I prepare mm, my dog mm. when they I prepare my dog when they're two months old. Yep. <laughs> for competition. Yeah. Yeah. I because of because of the many years experience and mm-hmm. uh, that's why when I when I have a new puppy okay I select a puppy then my aim my aim is uh, my goal is for the competition so people ask me how I get ready my dog for the competition yes I get re- I I start to get ready get my dog ready to the to the competition when they are two months old when I start the first day for my training yeah. yeah. So, so so do you think it I mean people think that they have to train hours and hours and hours a day does this apply to you no I not train uh, hours I, I you, in dog training you need some uh, feeling yeah you need to feel the dog when he's in good mood when he's in good uh, good uh, drive yeah. when he want to do okay. something yeah. okay then we can do more is the dog mm-hmm. training is not I want to make it's not the dog want to make me happy yeah but I want to make the dog happy. Yeah, yeah, that is dog training. The more important thing is that the dog must feel very happy to work with you, very happy to run into the training field. It's not about the time. I, I mm-hmm, never mm-hmm. I never spend one hour to train one session for my dog. Normally, I train uh, morning about 15 to 20 minutes and then evening about 15 to 20 minutes, no more. So, so Michael, just one question. So now we, we are talking about this and then now like somebody says who listen to this and say that I want to get into the sport. What mm-hmm. what would you rec- okay, besides you were saying that you need to get a you need to get a team, you need to find a proper teacher and all those things. What do you think that is the bare basic that the person needs to so let's say now he has a he has a dog. He the dog is like do you think like a dog that has no foundation, because you say it's two months old. You started putting the foundation in. So I do you think, think this is possible? Um, I think if people want to start uh, the sport, the first thing is they need to find a good breeder. They need to find a good breeder and then they need to buy a good dog from a good breeder. And then when you have a good dog, then you start from there. And then you need, for sure, you need the knowledge to, to bring up the puppy. And... Uh, because the way to bring up a puppy is uh, very, very important because uh, when the, the puppy from two months until 12 months old, this period is a golden learning period for, for, for the puppy. So you should not miss the opportunity of uh, train the dog in this age. So how to start is you, for sure you need to buy a, a good dog from a good breeder. Because when a, when you buy a good dog from a good breeder, when the puppy come at to you at two months old, they they already know many many things. Yeah, they then you start from there. It's not hard. It's not hard from you. Then you when you have a a good puppy, then you for for you the training is more easier. After you get a good puppy, then you need a then you need to learn because now knowledge is everywhere. You can go YouTube. You can go. Um, uh, online class you can go many many places to learn as long as you pay and people is uh, is happy to teach you i think yeah. nowadays uh, no i think is there's no secret in the world now mm-hmm. when you pay people will pay we will we, we, we'll teach you i think it's not a problem yeah and after that after you you train your puppy because uh, i think from two months to six months you almost no, don't need any people. And uh, in protection work, maybe you start when they are, or you you start to need a helper when they are seven to eight months old. After they change the teeth, then they start to need to play with other people. Now they mm-hmm. need to play with other people, and uh, that's why we need somebody else when they are seven eight months old. Mm-hmm. So before that, everything is uh, you can do by self. Mm-hmm. Interesting. So if, if let's say somebody now has one dog, let's say they have a German Shepherd at home and they listen to this and say that, okay, I want to take it, I want to participate in, not, not be competitive, but to participate in the sport. Do you think it's possible to be? Yes, yes. I think it's, uh, it's possible to, to do that. But uh, because nowadays there is uh, too many, I, I, I just can say there is too many 
or uh, information in uh, mm-hmm. in the internet, and uh, some information is not for our dog. Some information is not for our dogs because uh, I I just I, I can give a very uh, very easy example. Many many people they don't like uh, they don't allow their puppy to jump on people mm-hmm. who hug on other people. <laughs> they will say, oh, this is not okay. This is uh, a big problem for the for the puppy. This is not good yeah. for the puppy. You have to stop that. This and that. But for me, the, the, the this information maybe is good for the, for some pet dog, mm-hmm. but not for our not for our spot dog. Why? Why not for our spot dog? If you stop the puppy to jump, why? Okay, I said I have to say for why the puppy would like to jump on other people. Why? The reason puppy want to jump on other people is they they show happy and then they they show freely they are free and they they're open minded and then they go and then they want to make friends with other people, mm-hmm. yeah. And if the owner stop this behavior, no, you cannot, you cannot, you cannot, you cannot, you cannot, you cannot jump, you cannot go close to other people, you cannot not let other people touch your dog, not let other <laughs> uh, stranger give the food to your to your dog. After a few months, maybe when the puppy is one year old, they never go close to stranger before. Then they will stop themselves. Then they will block themselves, and then they will think that okay, I will not go to other people anymore. Just like a kids, when you when you when the father stop their kids to play with other people, mm-hmm. what, what do you think? What, what do you think? They'll be scared of people. <laughs> yeah, the, the 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 kids will not play with other people anymore. We will not play with other kids, or we will not speak with talk or talk with other stranger, and then they will close themselves, and then they will play only video, uh, <laughs> online game at at their room. And and what do you think when the when the the kids this kid is about eighteen years old? Yeah, they buy a and, gun. Yeah, and then and then they will miss many opportunity because of they 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 cannot speak well with other people. Their their communication is not good. Yeah. And then what they miss, they miss a lot in their future. Yeah, it's the same like a puppy. When you stop them to jump on people, yeah, then what your what your puppy will become after when they are one year old, they are big, yeah, the size is like this. And then what they think, the people they never go close to people. And if suddenly in accidentally, one time when stranger come to him and he feel not so good, and then he start to growl. And that guy is going away for sure because the head is like this, the the body is like this, the the size, and for sure the people is oh they scared they're going away. And then what the what the puppy when the when he's twelve or months old, what he think in his mind? He think that oh, when stranger come to me, and if I don't like, then I growl to him, or he will go away, and then he will start to use this tool to. Go to everybody else who want to come close to him. Then he start to, Rrr. or sometimes he will start to bark, or he want to attack, or he want to bite. And then people, then the problem is coming. Then, then they will ask, mm-hmm. "Hey, why my dog want to attack people? Hey, then why my dog don't go close to stranger? Hey, how to train my dog? Uh, don't bite people, huh? How to do, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, because of." You don't allow them to go to stranger when they are young, and what you want to do when they are one yeah. year old, and then the size of the head is like the the basketball. <laughs> yeah, and many people they they scared when your dog is that size. Yeah, so please let your puppy jump to a stranger with their permission. With their permission, yeah, for sure. We cannot say that. Okay, I allow. I Michael said. Allow your puppy jump to everybody. Then you start to let your puppy go to anybody else. Cannot, because <clears throat> before your dog jump can jump to on other people. Please ask. Hey, can I? Can my dog? Or you have to watch. Many people they love dogs. They will come to your dogs and then they they will start to approach your dog. Yeah, and then for this kind of people, then you ask them, can my dog go close to you? Yeah, they, when they said yes, then you have to ask. Hey, then my dog maybe will jump on you. We will make your shirt uh, dirty a little bit. And they said okay, no problem. Can come. Then you just release the, your dog and then let them have have a hug. But if you not ask people and then you and then you just simply let your dog jump on people because of Michael said 
my dog. Come <laughs> then you get a, you get a slap from people. That is it's normal, yeah. It's normal for dog people. You need to have that kind of manner. Ask first, hey, can I can my dog go close to you? When they said yes, welcome. It's no problem. It's no problem. Yeah, normally I will bring my puppy, <clears throat> jump on my dog friend or my student when we are have a group. Together, we sit down, we chit chat. Okay, then it's the puppy time, playing time. We let our puppy run free. Then the puppy can jump around to this person, to that person. Then they are free in their head. And from there, the puppy grow. Yeah. Then at the end, at the end, our puppy is open to everybody. Every stranger, they, they are open. Until we teach them, okay, now come the stranger. Then we, then we teach them, okay, now... I make you on the switch, you can turn into aggression. When I tell you that the, the good trained dog will turn to aggression straight away in a few, uh, in a split second, they change their face, then they will start to make aggression. Yeah, that is training. Yeah, that is training. <clears throat> yeah, so oh that's, what, that, that's why I said when people ask me if possible or not to bring a puppy, okay, I want to. I want to do this. I want to compete. Yeah, that is that is after two years. But before that, please get some correct information. Yeah, correct information. And I have uh, I have many many example for that. Do you have time or not? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have we have many example for that. Many people say okay, they don't like the dog poo in front. This is our Malaysia, our common. I think our common. A problem and people think that oh what the fuck the dog is going in front of you and going like hell, pulling like hell and oh I have to stop this I have to uh, they must walk at my side because why because I am the boss hey please don't show don't show you are the boss here yeah. show you are the boss somewhere else <laughs> a puppy I I love my puppy to go in front to pull a little bit they have to pull yeah, it's why good. they have to pull? So, is there a conflict between like sport training and pet dog training? Yes, it's a conflict. It's a conflict. The pet dog training is because pet dog training their aim is not too high. Pet dog training is they okay, they stay safe, they quite quiet at home, then they they make no not uh noise, and then they go out, don't pulling. Yes, we. I am not anti pet dog training. You can do whatever you like. But if you want to come in the sport, you have to get the information for for how to bring your dog to the level. Like before, you tell, before you tell people that you want to go competition or go something else, then get the right <coughs> information. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. The foundation, the pulling is very important because when you stop the pulling, when, when you want to become a sport dog, competition dog, when you stop the pulling, the dog is afraid to go in front, to pull in front. Then there is the many problem when you want them to pull, when you want them to go in front with power, the, the forward drive. We said forward drive. What kind of drive we are using, using uh, in for the forward drive? We have a send away. If your dog not pulling, and then one day you want to send your dog send away or go to the front, straight line, 50 meter, very fast speed, and you stop the pulling drive when they are very young. The the blind searching, you stop to the pulling very uh, very young, and then they scared to pull in protection work when they face on the helper, and they scared to pull because they they get they get too much punishment from pulling, mm -hmm. and then on that then you think oh after that you said okay now I want my dog to pull what now I want my dog to go in front. No, yeah, I, I completely agree. I think it's very not... important to the way you bring up the puppy all the way to its adult life. It's The key is the foundations, right? Just like how Michael said, yes. it, you have to have that right information to translate to your dog for him yeah. to understand what's going to happen in the next, in the next uh, few sessions or whatever. Yeah. yeah like that, my... that is, that's very important, yeah. My otherwise, sister... otherwise, you will keep on, uh, keep on, uh, make correction. Correct. Yeah. Make correction the whole life, and, oh, and I think my first dog uh, that I tried to go into the sport with, I made, 
brand new, you know, I made a bucket load of error. And a lot of it was because my mind was conflicted between what I have learned over the many, many past years around pet ownership. Caesar then, Milan style. <laughs> yeah, a lot of control, a lot of pressure. And then suddenly I want this dog to do something else. And the dog is very confused, like completely confused. And I, I'm pretty sure I broke the dog. But let's say if so, Michael, does your dog is your does your dog have an off switch? Like at home, they come into the house, or if you don't, maybe you don't put the dogs in the house. They come in the house, they can just sleep while you're watching TV and all yeah. those stuff. Yeah, I do that. I do that when I'm at home with uh with my 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 family together. My dog come into my house and then we sit down. They are they are just like my family member. Yeah. My dog can do that. It's not a problem. Yeah, but uh, but one thing is my dog will not sleep in my house because they have their own kennel. After after I sit down a few hours, and then at at the night I will put my dog uh into his cage into his uh his kennel. Hey, Michael, can I just ask? So um, um. You know, when I first learned about this sport, when I first got into this sport, when I first read about it, um, I love tracking. I love the, you know, the idea of teaching a dog to use its nose and see the dog work using its nose. It's so natural. It's unbelievable um, that they can track so far. And I, I, I love obedience. I mean, everyone loves obedience. Obedience is so flashy. You know, the dog's listening to you, flipping around and sit down, stand really fast, right? But when I first got into the sport, I remember very clearly I never liked protection. I was always very worried about protection. Protection just didn't sit very well with me. And and I can understand because um like my father in law, my neighbors, you know, they, they would look at what I'm doing and and they would think that and I did think as well that teaching a dog to bite is very controversial. It's very risky. It's you know, it's like um teaching someone how to use a gun, you know, is that sort of liability. How do you um how do you explain to someone if they're worried like you know uh you're teaching michael you're teaching your dog to bite isn't that dangerous what would be your response mm -hmm. i think the bite the bite the aggression drive the bite they are they are the instinct in a working dog because they breed 100 years they are hit they are breed, 100 over years breeding history they are they breed for that yeah they breed for uh, tracking, they breed for obedience, and then they breed because the they breed for protection because that that is their working ability. Yeah, that is their working ability. Even you not train, they are inside. Mm. They are inside. They are they are genetic. Mm -hmm. They are inside, and if you not train, you don't know how to control. They are inside the. They are inside the dog. The genetic is there. Yeah, if you train then you know when you train then you know okay how is their aggression how is their uh their uh Mentality. their drive and then their their power when they want to <clears throat> fight someone yeah then from there you teach your dog it's a communication you teach your dog okay you have to control this situation you are not allowed this situation you are allowed you and then at the end at the end of the training you have to tell your dog Okay, you are only allowed when I when I approve. When I tell you yes, you are allowed to show your aggression. You are allowed to bite when I is when only I tell you. So when 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 uh when you don't train your dog, you don't you will never have that kind of uh, communication. And then if you don't have that kind of communication, you means you don't have that kind of control. But the instinct is still there. One day they want to bite other people, and then you cannot control what you what you you can do. You you can do nothing. Yeah? you can you cannot say stop. You cannot say stop biting or make out or come to me or say sit on not barking. You you not even control. You if you not even to tell your dog sit and quiet. How you can how you can do the rest when they are in when they are in uh, in drive. They want to bite other people else, and then you cannot control. You go suddenly, you grab your dog. Maybe he turn back and want to bite you. So you you need training. You need training on that because uh, they are genetic is inside. Even you train or you not train, they are inside the dog. Yeah, you, you cannot you yeah. cannot take the genetic away. You cannot. 
<laughs> or else you don't want to buy that kind of breed. Mm. Or else then you buy golden retriever. <laughs> yeah, for the collie or chihuahua is better. If you <laughs> yeah, yeah, if you select a, a working dog like Rockweiler, Doberman, or German Shepherd, Malinois, then you have to accept the genetic is there. And then even you're not trained, they are there. Yeah, they will bite, they want to bite. It's just a question of do you know where the limits are? Do you know how to work with it? Yeah. Interesting. Now, so so yeah, that's very. I mean, I, I never thought of it that way, and that's quite good. So so you know, we're saying that it, it, the program is already loaded into the dog. The dog wants to bite, knows how to bite, will bite. The question is whether we can control their impulse, whether we can we can uh, know how they react under certain situation. But yeah. I wanted to ask you. So like so, uh, and, and this is a debate we see a lot on the internet. It's a debate that people talk a lot about. Um, if you have an IGP dog say, you know, an IGP-3, a top-performing dog, and someone breaks into your house, does it necessarily mean that your dog will defend right. your house and guard and bite? Or is that just a wish that every owner has, but in reality, the dog may not <clears throat> attack, guard, and bite? No. Even you have an IGP-3 dog, they, I, I have many people ask me this question. <laughs> hey, your dog is biting the sleeve. Mm. And what you do, what's going on is somebody climb into your house and don't have the sleep. Mm. Would you, will, your, will your dog bite? Is <laughs> your I, I make a joke with them. I said, very simple. My house, at, at, the door, at the door of my house, I have hang a sleep. <laughs> and I write down a note, before you enter my house, please take the sleep. Otherwise, my dog will not bite you. <laughs> so, so you don't think your dog will bite? Uh, I uh, for the question for your question, I make a serious answer. I think many IGP dog dogs will not bite. Will mm. not bite if you are not trained for that situation. Mm -hmm. If you want, is that is because that is nothing to do with our IGP sport. Mm, but if you want your dog to protect your house, then you have to train this situation. The biting situation is very easy to train. If you are a good IGP trainer. And mm. if you want, would like your dog to protect your house. I don't think so. That is any problem. You want to train your own dogs to protect your house. It's not okay, a problem. Agree. Yeah. Mm. If you so, buy, if you buy a IGP dogs from overseas and you don't have any idea in dog training, mm. yeah, maybe that dog will not buy because you don't know how to train. You don't know how to do. Can't and, find the previous, switch. and the previous owner never trained this. Never trained the situation before. Yep. Then the dog will not bite. So, yeah. so, so your, your answer is that um, the way in which IGP trains a dog is very picture specific, very scenario specific. So the dog will bite when a certain scenario is present. And we don't intentionally go out to teach it's, a dog it's, to. It it's depends on some dog also. Some dog, when they have, uh, when their instinct is, uh, yeah. is natural, it's a little bit more high there because some dogs, their aggression drive is more high. They are, what they call, uh, their 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 um, their instinct to protect their, their own area. Some dogs they is there. That kind of dog will bite if not uh even <clears throat> they are not uh they are not territorial trained. La. Yeah, territory, yeah. They are, they, they are not trained. But some yeah. dogs where they are more friend there is friend some friendly dogs mm, they will not they will they will just will not bite because the uh, they think it's okay for someone to come in their house. Mm -hmm. Just like normal, when people come in their house in daytime, mm -hmm. their boss is welcome. Then they, and then when they see this, it's, it's, I think it's, for them it's normal. Mm -hmm. Unless you train. If you, want, if you really want your dog to protect your house, you, you have an IGP tree or whatever, mm -hmm. if you really want them to protect your house, then you have to train. That on, uh, train the biting moment means you need somebody else to to mm. climb into your house mm. and then you just you just check then you can check your dog okay what he do and then from the situation and from the rea reaction of the dogs then okay then you train train them to protect train them to attack then mm. you say to them okay, this is in this situation you are allowed to bite people in this situation mm. and so your dog mm. get the green light from you then next time when somebody do the same thing if you go straight away and bite, it's about training. Yeah, it's about training. 
Michael, so just one last question from me. Um, now, a lot of our listeners uh, may not be in the sport of IGP. Um, they could be just pet dog owners. Uh, and some might be thinking about uh, uh, getting involved in the sport. And some may have already just started, uh, like myself. But I would just want to ask you, right? So we, we talk a lot about biting. You spoke about a few uh, drives. So I mean, like, you know, um, some dogs are very motivated motivated with food. Some dogs are very motivated with toys. Some dogs are very motivated with prey. But when it comes to biting, I understand that um, there are at least three main drives that a lot of trainers use. Um, prey drive, where the dog is chasing something that's moving like a prey. Um, defense drive, when you put a dog in a situation where they can't run, they can't back up anymore, and they've got only one choice, which is to fight. And aggr open aggression, where the dog is just coming forward for aggression. Um, your advice to someone listening um, who is just thinking about this sport, right? Which drive should a new handler work in and which drive should a handler avoid if it doesn't have professional guidance? If, uh, if you want to train in protection, when you have no experience, I don't think so you should play with this. It's <laughs> very dangerous. Because yeah. It's a bit uh, dangerous, yeah. I think you need someone else to have uh, even a little experience, and uh, mm, then you then you train the situation for sure. Then for sure, the dog start need to start in prey drive. They need to start in prey drive, and then after that, uh, you need to find a, a better trainer to to put on more aggression on dogs, and then at the end you need to find a balance because. Uh, only prey is not good. Only aggression is not good. So you need in the in the in the real good protection dog, they need the they need to balance the the aggression aggression drive and the prey drive. Yeah. So we cannot say uh, you want to come in uh, to guard dog and then the the owner itself have no experience. When you have no experience what you are going to do with your dog and then you think that okay you are training in, in protection your dog already can bite the sleeve and then okay then you have uh, you have confidence with your dog but and when come to the real situation your dog run away mm -hmm. yeah so I think at the end you need uh, in protection you need someone uh, who have experience to help you a little bit to explain to you how to how to start with spray drive to make the confidence and then after the prey drive, how you want to going to open the aggression? If you open too much in aggression, he will not bite because uh, then he will become fierce. He will run away because the avoidance and the avoidance and the aggression is uh, very close. Many dogs when you too much to them, oh, and then you have to need you need to find somebody who can read the dog better, and then uh, then they can. Uh, open a good aggression for dogs without a run away. Yeah. And then at the end, the dog have to go in front to bite. So this is a, a this kind of thing you need the you need to balance the drive. Otherwise when you open the aggression too much, the dog will only bite and run away. Or they will not go far, 20, 30 meters away to attack attack somebody. Yeah. They will only Stay close to you. That is the uh, that is the uh, the problem of uh, when they have uh, too much aggression. Yeah. So, you I think at the end you need you need to find someone who has some experience to balance the the aggression and then the prey. So the main and, advice is that, don't do this yourself. Don't don't play mm -hmm. with this at home yourself and make yeah, sure you can you can play with you can play with the sleeve, you can play with the sleeve and uh and just light just let them play as a biting a prey yeah but how can a, your dog your own dog make the full aggression to you i and i don't think so the people who have no experience will can open the aggressive drive no mm. no that is uh that is mm. that is not easy <laughs> because it's conflicting for the dog to show aggression to his own. yeah how how can he show the aggression drive to you want to bite you when you are the boss yeah <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, normally you say, hey, you bite the shoe. I say, no, you, you bite the, you eat the furniture. I said, no, 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 no. You yes. keep a lot of pressure to your dog. And then, okay, you control the food aggression. And then at the end, you want him to bite you and food aggression. Mm -hmm. bah, ah, 
are to you. You know, then what he think? No, it's not. Mm. I don't. I don't think so. So Michael, so you've been in this spot like for twenty over years. You've been in IGP for twenty over years, and what do you see has changed from the time you started and till until now, like in twenty twenty one? Now, what what do you see? What do you the think train, have changed? The, the train is a lot. They wish just uh, talk about the the performance of the dogs. There's a lot of big change. Yeah, if you've seen the the video from nineteen ninety six. And then, or, or and then now you, if you watch the video from two thousand twenty twenty, there's a lot of big, big, big difference. Huh? There's a big difference because nowadays people have a uh, more information from internet, and then the top bit, and then the the top trainer they they start to discuss. They have new or young trainer. They have many many good ideas about how to train. A behavior, how to create a new behavior. Now, nowadays, I think ooh, we are in a very very high level in in the in the competition. So the, the the changing is very very big. Do you yeah. think it will change more? Like you say, you know, nineteen nineteen eighties videos that you watch versus twenty twenty. Like when it comes to twenty forty, do you think dog training yeah, will change? Yeah, for sure, for sure, because the world is changing every time. Evolving. And then the technology, the technology and the tools, the technology built the tools, and then now we have better and better tools. Mm. And then for sure, then the technology will help us to train the dogs. And then if uh, yeah, for sure because uh, from nineteen fifty to nineteen eighties, there's a lot of changing. Yeah, from nineteen eighties to now twenty twenty, there's a Big, big, big changing, and for sure in twenty forty maybe we are we still alive, maybe but we are getting very old on that. Time. <laughs> but I think, I think yes, for sure they are they are, they are changed. They are changed. If I think if you're not going to Europe to watch their competition in five years, you will see a big, big change, big different, big change. And then, and then for me, I think that is not so good for the young generation to, uh, to come into the sport now because nowadays the European their standard is really really high and for oh. new people newcomer who want to start the game they will find out that wow they're so high in the sky and for them to start and chase wow will be a big 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 pressure so just feel free I think for the young new generation who want to come into the sport just feel free make it easy Enjoy. Yeah, enjoy, make the training ha uh, happy. You have to remember that the dog training, the most important thing is when you train the dog, the, do the dogs make you happy and you also make the dog very, very happy. Then you have a very happy team. And then at the end of the day, you have, can have your cold beer and your, your steak and then you enjoy your day. <laughs> I, I think that is, uh, that is more important than then okay, you come into the sport and then you just want to compete. No, it's not. It's not that. So, uh, so I came to this sport um, <clears throat> wanting to to learn more because of the dogs that I I really loved. I loved the breed. I loved everything. And then I came about learning about Michael's courses, and and I really enjoyed it because it was very harmonious. Right, it wasn't only about training. We made friends. We enjoyed after training. We would have dinner. We yeah. chill. We were, this this is yeah. something that I think it, it's very hard to find in any sport. I mean, for example, you play football. After football, you go home. That's it. But <laughs> in, in this situation, you know, I, I, this is something that I really enjoyed part of the community of, of, of the dog. I came in for this. I didn't come in to, hey, yeah, I'm going to be world champion. No, I didn't have that yeah, mindset. No, yeah, don't, my, don't yeah. Like yeah. my, my mindset was, oh, I'm here. I'm going to make friends. I enjoy playing with my dog. I enjoy training and I want to learn and then see how where that takes us. And and uh, we have I, I honestly I'm I'm very privileged to 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 have learned from Michael and of course if anyone wants to learn Michael also has a online training academy right now also which we will share later on, um but yeah basically that's what I wanted to add. Hey Michael, just one I'm gonna hijack a little bit. I didn't know that your first stop was a Rottweiler and I didn't know that you were in a show ring and you were training a Rottweiler. So now that I know, I have to ask this question: Why do you stop? <laughs> 
Yeah, uh, no, my, my first dog is better. Venom. Venom. Yeah, why, 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 why not continue with the Rottweiler? Why don't you have a Rottweiler now? I, I train. Can I, have I send you? One, I have trained one Rottweiler from puppy until I get an IGP two. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I, I get IGP two, and then is a uh, Rottweiler is a is a good dog. For sure, is. But for our country, Rottweiler is a bit too hot for them. Yeah. Mm. A bit mm. too hot for them when they are big size. And when I train a little bit more, they, ooh, they have their the stamina is going down, the drive is going down, and it's not easy. And uh, when I want to train, yeah, for sure, I have some of my some of my friends uh, now they still train uh, Rottweiler because of they love the breed. Okay, when they love the breed more than the sport, mm. then they will keep on going on training the Rottweiler. Because I love the sport more than the breed. Yeah, yeah. That's why I need to find a a, a dog who are suitable in who are suitable for the sport in our country. Because our country is different. Our country is a very hot country. Mm. So I I cannot have a Rottweiler or a boxer. To train in a hot country like like Malaysia, and then yeah, then it's it's quite hard, it's quite hard. So I need a suitable dog for our country with to train the sport. It seems yeah. you got wrong dog already. <laughs> yeah, it's not wrong dog. If you James, if you love the breed, yeah, then you train because of you love the breed, then you train. Rottweiler is yeah. it's not a problem. Many people is the same, and then you go to IFR or or ADRK World Championship. It's the same. There's a World Championship only for Rottweiler. Mm. I, will. I will. You can also go to SCI. It's not a problem when you're good enough. FCI you maybe. Yeah, go to the highest level FCI. But then, uh, to be very honest, I, I think um. I never had this dream, but uh, Brandon is very good at poisoning uh, people's <laughs> thoughts. So now uh, IFR is, is is in my is in my target list for 2025, 2026. Yeah, try Isn't IFR, IFR World Championship. Yeah, when yeah. you Rob Weiler, you compete there in IFR, I think it's good enough. Good yeah. enough. Yeah, so so that's that's my target, that's my goal. It won't be a straight road, there'll be a lot of trouble. I think um, none of the clubs in Malaysia are IFR members. Um so I just need to to try and figure out how to make it happen. But my question uh, is... I think when you are under MK, you are under IFR. You can go to IFR World Championship. Because yeah. IFR is under FCI. Yeah, they, so IFR they, is under FCI. They your MK pedigree. Ah, because they were saying that only IFR members can join. Oh, yeah. we'll find out. IFR, IFR members, I think we they are under FCI. They will accept you. Okay, okay. But yeah, I want to ask you, you the, 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 the switch in the weather, so let's say like if I've been training Hilda, Hilda is my one and a half year old Rottweiler. Um, I'm, I love her, she's doing very well in training, but you know, we're training in Malaysian weather. If suddenly we get to go to Hungary, you know, for, for um, IFR World Championship, right? And then it's, it's, you know, winter or, you know, cold weather. How, how do you find a dog from a Malaysian weather adjusting to a cold weather? Is it a problem or? Easier for them. Oh, I think for Rottweiler should not be a problem because they are genetic. They are come from the cold. They are come from cold country. Mm. Rottweiler should not be a problem. I think if you want to go competition for the first year, you need minimum. You need to go one month earlier. One month. <laughs> yeah, one month <laughs> earlier. Or three weeks minimum. Three weeks you have to go. Just to acclimatize to the weather, the oxygen uh, level. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. for your for your Mellies, was there was there an adjustment like to go from a hot country to a cold country? No, no, no. There, there. Hmm. I think my Mali because uh when they are young, I train oh. them a lot of things. I move them around. My uh my uh socialize is uh, quite well with my all with all of my puppy, mm. and uh, just some weather change, there's not that they never have a problem. And they even perform they don't have jet lag. Yeah. Did they perform? Yeah, like big. Brandon say, did they perform? Yeah, they, they can perform. They still can perform well. Better. Sorry. 
uh, better? I mean, like if the weather is cooler? Uh, it's, it's not better. They, they, they are not changing. They are not changing, but uh, why you should go why you should go early, earlier because of the trekking field. Mm. The trekking field, because their plantation, they are using, they plant, they, are, they smell. It's not, we, we don't have that kind of thing. So you need to go there for or or train the tracking. You need to go there to let the dog uh bite the European helper because they are different. They are fast. Yeah. They are strong. They hit hard fast. So your dog have to have to uh, use for that because uh, if you train only in Malaysia, we are all small size. We don't have a one meter ninety helper. And uh, fast, they run fast. They they are strong. They hit the hot dog very hard. They give full aggression to your dog. So you have to get ready for that. Oh. Uh, that's why you need to go a little bit earlier. I think three uh, weeks not, is not enough. <laughs> yeah, not let your dog, not, not your dog. When long attack, your dog run away from helper, then, then you lose your faith. Then mm. maybe you will stop. On this sport. <laughs> yeah, somebody will stop directly from the sport because they feel they, they lose their faith. And uh, it's it's not good. So for the first time completion, you need to get a really good uh, preparation for that. It's not only uh you because many people think that oh when I have an IGP three, I'm ready for the world championship. No, it's not like that. It's not like that. You need to well prepare your dog for the because the world championship is the highest level in the in the in the world. For 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 rock pilot, IFR is for rock pilot. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so you you will compete with the top of the world of the rock pilot from each yeah. from each country. So they are not yes, it, it's not easy. Yeah, it's not easy. So Malaysia has actually have many many types of competitions right in in um, sports and i mean we can go on and on and on and on uh, with michael because he's got tons of experience but i think we might have to call you back in to talk about search and rescue <laughs> we have to talk about uh, agility we can talk about obedience we can we can, there's so many episodes that we can do with you but i think yep. also the most important thing that that we have spoken about in our previous episodes was about taking care of the dog, taking care of... I mean, the whole point of, of us in this podcast was to really inspire people to be able to, to just... Tr not only to keep the dog at home, but we also want them to train their dog and love the dog the way we do. We wanted to share this passion. So, but this to me, personally, comes down to finding the right uh, breeder, right? We have spoken about this many, many times. And I think in Malaysia, there's no one who really does it the way you do it in terms of, um, uh, if, if I'm not mistaken, neurological stimulation with your puppies, mm -hmm. right? So, so do you mind to share a little bit about this with our, with our um, listeners so, so they understand the importance of all these um, <clears throat> activities that you are doing at such an early age? Mm, yeah, yeah, I'm I'm ready to open for this because uh what I think this uh all uh from the puppy first born the first day and until when they are two months old, that is a uh, that is a uh, very important for the puppy and uh and uh, for the breeder also for a good breeder, we will take uh this uh as a very serious mm -hmm. uh, issue. And uh, first of all, I have to say that if you want to buy a puppy, please take the puppy at least minimum 50 days. 50. Not take the puppy when they are 30 days. Because a puppy needs to have their mother milk and minimum 50 days. Yeah, then they will have better immune system. Mm -hmm. there, there. Then, you, then they will have a better health for sure then you will have a you will not you, you will not have a many skin problem or whatever many people now they say hey my dog cannot eat chicken uh. the dog yeah. food made from the chicken oh my dog have allergy this and that and why why your dog is so not healthy and 
<clears throat> many health problems. Why? I think mainly it come from come from you take the puppy too early. 35 mm -hmm. days they are separate from the mother and then the rest of the problem come to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And please, one if you want to buy a puppy, take the puppy at least when they are 50 days old and make sure they have their mother's milk until 50 yeah. days old is a minimum. Normally I let my puppy drink their mother's milk until they are 60 days, 60. Yeah. And uh, start from the day one because I know that I am built, I'm uh, I am uh, breed a working dog. Yep. And most of my uh, my clients who want to buy a good working dog. Yep. Um, they will they will they will train the dog. They will train the dogs and then start from I then I know that okay the people want to work with the dog. That's why I start from day one. I start to open the nose. Yeah, the function of the nose. Day one means uh, after they born and the next day when they become a little bit stronger. And then I will start to pull the puppy away from the mother, let them use the nose to find the meal. Mm -hmm. And then start from there, they will fight for the food. Yeah. And uh and after that I will I will do the uh many, many <laughs> things. I think I have uh, this in my Facebook. Mm -hmm. I think you if you if you are if you are my Facebook friend you can uh, watch that because it's too long story until yep, yep, yep. until where the, when they are two months old I have did so many many things yep, yep, yep. Uh, if I want to speak talk to you I think we need we need uh, yeah, more, than, more than one hour for that yeah. because uh, there's many things or, or, or we can have one episode of be talking about puppy from day one to two months until uh, they are going to new home I think better we do this in the next episode yes yes if you don't mind of course <laughs> yeah <laughs> because can we down, will definitely can want down, to then i can right. write down more details about on which day on what day what i'm doing with my puppy yeah. and why i'm doing that why i separate them alone yeah. in the box in a little box why i switch on the radio why i, yeah. I set up my uh my garden like a uh, like a uh, it's not a Deep children's playground, yeah. yeah. It's not a children's playground, <laughs> but it's yeah. a dog playground for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why I setting up a dark room, and why I setting make the pallets, everything. Why I do that, I think it's yeah. a long story. I think I need right. more than one hours to talk about that. Maybe yeah, we if you don't do... mind, we will definitely be very very happy to welcome you back on and speak about not only on breeding but also I guess we want to talk about search and rescue, other dog sports. Um, and of course, maybe um, the Malinois breed as well, because I think this is uh, something that we can really educate the, the current uh, population here. That, yeah, that I think the next, the next time we can talk about the, yes, the puppy yes, from yes. the first day to two months. Yeah, from the first yeah. day to two months, what I have uh, done with the puppy. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Thank you so uh, much. But um, before we end, just want to share that uh, Michael has a. Uh, a dog training course online on Facebook and you can join his uh, Facebook group <coughs> which is Malaysian Dog Training hyphen Tigerland K9 um, I'm, I'm sure uh, he'll be in touch with you guys if you have any questions I'm sure Michael will answer you and and we'll see from there um, you guys have any other things you guys would like to elaborate or, or, or any questions or anything you want to say Michael? Mm, yeah it's, it's okay because I'm coming back yep <laughs> Maybe next week <laughs> for the for the yeah. for the uh, about the about the puppy about how a good how a yep. good breeder. Uh, yep. Yes. Yes. I think that's puppy, very important. Take care of their puppy from the from day one. How I yep. train my puppy from day one. I I start to train my puppy from day one. People said, "Hey, what are you, what are yeah, you yeah, doing? Yeah. The puppy only day one. How you can do what what you can do." Because many people ask me, hey, my, my dog already six months, can I start training? I say, hey, what? I start my dog training when they're day one. When yeah. they are after born, day one, I already started training. And what I do when they're day five, what I do before they open their eye. Yeah, yeah there's many, many things. What I'm doing when they start to eat the pellets, the, the, the dog food, when they're 30 days old, 
Yeah. I think it's important. I mean, yeah. I, I would just like to share, um, uh, I don't get paid for this. It's not a plug advertisement, but it's a sincere sharing. So I'm actually part of Michael's uh, online class. Um, I Just to share with our listeners who may not uh, know what to expect or may not know if it's worth um, the time, the effort, the money. So I find it very, very helpful for me, especially just going back to a lot of the basics. Um, in it, Michael splits the doc into the age. So at certain age, Michael does certain activities and then it goes on to another age. The doc does different sets of activities, building on from the first sets of activities. Um, he, you know, people are posting videos for Michael to review, which he reviews. Um, you are, you know, ask a question a day. Um, so there are lots of things in there. And, and I also learn a lot from watching other people, other handlers with their dogs, um, their body language, their timing, and then reading Michael's comments and I can go back to watch their video again and I watch my own video. So I think if anyone is serious about, you know, just getting started, just to learn of the basics of dog training, I think it's a fantastic resource. This is the way, yeah. Yeah, and I don't, I don't think, you know, guys like Brandon and Michael in their time, I don't think they had such a luxury to to. Hey, last learn. time, my time, I got DVD, okay? <laughs> 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 so no, it's, it's, it's really, really good. So I encourage our listeners to consider it. Yeah. <laughs> DVD. Michael gave me DVD before. Yeah, now, now, now we put, now we put the, the training of the puppy in uh, Facebook. Uh, yeah. Yeah, was, regular yeah. Sunday, everybody who buy my puppy, I, I make a DVD wow. for how I train their puppy from when they're, when they're young, how I do the obedience. I make the heel work and sit down, stand. What already? What the puppy already learned? I do me. not think that's any breeder Malaysia. Can continue, yeah, they can yeah. Continue. I don't think any breeder in Malaysia does. That, that's why I'm saying. I think this this breeding um episode will be very very interesting because there there's so many so called breeders, right? But I I think there's no ethical breeder. I, I it's something to debate. But of course, I'm not here to chat high or anything, right? But. Uh, <laughs> Okay. I really, I really think a lot of people could could really take this concept and 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 really build it for whatever breed and they have. Right? We have then we have uh, better dogs in Malaysia. Yes, More yes, yes, dogs yes, in Malaysia. yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Thank you so much, Michael. Thank for you, your Michael. Time. Thank you. Um, okay, we're gonna okay. wrap off. Uh, okay. We Bye. go. <laughs> <laughs> See ya. Oh. Yeah, yeah, can already. All right. Thank you, Michael. Okay, bye. Thank bye. you. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.